After over a thousand episodes, the final chapter in Ash's journey is here. And with that, I want to revisit three of the greats. I was going to do a whole Ash Ketchum iceberg theory, but instead we're going to talk about the big three. How old is Ash Ketchum? Who is Ash Ketchum's dad? And what level is Ash's Pikachu? These are all topics that I've covered before, primarily right back at the beginning side of the channel's history, right when the channel was starting like six years ago. And a lot has changed in six years and a lot has been presented to us in those episodes. So I want to give you my final definitive takes on these three theories. And if you've got different thoughts, I want to hear them in the comment section down below. And I'll admit, as Pokemon theories go, these three are probably some of the most far-fetched I've ever done, but that also makes them the most absolute fun. So here are three of my favorite Pokemon theories, all to do with Ash Ketchum, and they are the big three questions. Starting with, how old is Ash Ketchum? So, how old is Ash Ketchum? Well, I'll meet you with a different question. First of all, which Ash Ketchum are we talking about? Because there are multiple Ash Ketchums. There's the Ash Ketchum that appears in the TV show and the movies that now we know for a fact are absolutely canon. We see at the end of the penultimate episode, the Ultimar uh, area from the fifth Pokemon movie. But what about the I Choose You movie, a retelling of the beginning of the Kanto story? That surely, as well as the following two movies after that, the Lugia movie, Power of One, um, and the, or Power of Us, sorry, and the Coco movie, uh, th these are a different canon, a different version of Ash Ketchum. And surely we can't also be talking about the Ash Ketchum that appears in, I don't know, in Pokemon Masters, although that seems to exist in a universe outside of time. There are brief references to Ash Ketchum in the games, we see a little snippet of Ash Ketchum in Mimikyu's room in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and when it comes to the main continuity of Pokemon, there is a little bit of an issue when it comes to Ash's age. In the Unova series, right in the very first episode, Ash Ketchum is referred to as being 10 years old, and obviously, the obvious answer to this is, well, it's like how Bart Simpson is always 10. There doesn't need to be a reason, it is a cartoon, but I am a Pokemon theorist, dang it, and I want to crack into this, and I like this idea of multiple versions of Ash, I always have. Because, well, yes, even the penultimate episode of Ash's saga shows references to movies that he did back in the Johto region, means that the Ash that is in Pokemon Journeys obviously travel around the Johto region, and we see throughout Journeys references to his times in earlier regions, like flashbacks to his battle with Lieutenant Surge, or, or with Chuck, the gym leader from before, and we see all of the Pokemon that he's traveled with still at Oak's lab. I suggest that this is set, this is a version of Ash that set out on his journey just at a slightly younger age. Why? Because the Pokemon multiverse is a thing. But why separate them at all? Why, why do that just for the sake of giving Ash an age? Well, it's because, and this is something that will come up in the theory about Ash's Pikachu's level, there is a kind of phenomenon in the animated series, which is Ash's skill set really seems to, like, dumb down at the beginning of Unova. His abilities just seem to worsen, and then he gets good again in Kalos. So this isn't just a secular every new generation thing. On top of that, for the first four generations of Pokemon, and even including the Orange Islands, between his journeys to different regions, there are these sort of transition episodes where Ash Ketchum goes home to Pallet Town. He has a chat with Mum and says, Hi, Mum. I, I know I haven't seen you in, like, ages. I've been traveling around the world, but I'm off out. There's a whole new region to go to. And there are these little transitions that just stop at the end of Generation 4. Suddenly, he goes from having Sceptile battling Darkrai, and he's really, you know, good at what he can do to uh, the beginning of Unova, where not only is he referred to as being 10 again, despite the fact that we saw in the third Pokemon movie, which we now know those movies are canon, um, that we saw in the, the Pichu Bro short that Ash was celebrating a year since him and Pikachu first met, meaning he's a year older, meaning either this is a retcon, which is more likely, or this Ash Ketchum literally cannot be 10, this one in Unova, and he's struggling against a level 5 Snivy with Pikachu. We are going to come back to that later, but my hypothesis is much like uh, Ash A from the original series and Ash B from the I Choose You movie are different Ashes, so too in the main continuity there are one, two, or maybe three different Ashes, with Ash from generations 1 to 4 seeming to be pretty consistent in their story, the Ash from Generation 5 and Unova seeming to be perhaps a new Ash uh, who gets better as he moves into Kalos. And then as for Alola, possibly a, a newer version of Ash, or maybe not, maybe just a continuation of the same. After all, he keeps on getting better after that, winning the Alola League, and then of course, eventually becoming the best trainer in the world in the Galar region. So maybe there's just two Ashes where it's split down the middle. As for those earlier memories, again, these occurred at a time when this Ash Ketchum started his journey at a slightly younger age than 10. And that would mean that Ash, at the end of Pokemon Journeys, 
is no longer 10. Now, Matt Pat did a really interesting video on how old is Ash Ketchum, and he seemed to make this idea that, that by the time that we get to like the Kalos region, Ash is like nearly in his 20s, based on observations of the seasons moving in the animated series. And this is where I disagree with Matt Pat. Seasons in fictional worlds can move at different rates to seasons in regular world. Take Game of Thrones, Arya Stark is nine years old at the beginning of the story, but she's never seen winter before because, well, winter is coming. 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 I'm cold. Winter is a big deal in the world of Ice and Fire lasting years, and so too is it the case that in the world of Pokemon, where the world is similar to our Earth, but a little bit different, let's take the Paldea region for example, which is the Pokemon representation of Spain, it's clearly smaller than real world Spain actually is. The whole Pokemon globe may be a different size, or the various continents may be different sizes, and certainly the seasons move at a different rate, because in the black and white video games, seasons move at a rate of one per month, meaning that seasons happen three times as frequently in a year as they do in our world. So if you then go back to Matt Pat's video and apply that logic, Ash is about 13, 14 by the time he gets to the Sinnoh League, and I would guess that he is again about 13, 14 by the time that we get to Johto's. I wouldn't know for sure without going through and checking every time the seasons move, but yeah, I'd guess he, he's a young teenager at the end of where he is in journeys now as a world champion, which totally checks out. But that's my theory on how old Ash Ketchum is. Now let's talk about the big question. Who's the dad? Ash Ketchum's father, was it Mr. Mime? Is it Giovanni? Mr. Mime? Mr. Mime. These were the kinds of ideas being thrown around when I started Pokertubing, and in canon, there does seem to be a character who's a great candidate, which is this character that appears in Pokemon Chronicles called Silver, who walks around with a chick reader on his shoulder and seems to like spark up when he's chatting to the character of Richie, a weird Ash lookalike, and uh, seems to know Ash's by name. And there's maybe this implication that Silver is, in fact, Ash Ketchum's father. Which is super weird because he's talking to Richie, a guy that literally looks like his son and it like it never comes up. Anyway, Ash's father has only canonically been mentioned, I think, three times in the main series. Once by Delia Ketchum in reference to uh, how quickly he got to Viridian City. Once in the Coco movie, which is again a separate canon um, in terms of just like a message that Ash's dad gave to him. Which really doesn't open up about his father much. And then also a flashback showing a man with a rapid Ash uh, chatting to Ash. And back in, this was like my first ever video on Loxton's channel that I ever did with him. And I was super, super proud of this one. But back when we were talking about this idea, I threw a spanner of works i threw something out there that i've even seen other youtube channels like quote since then um and i think i was the first person to kind of make this suggestion and nobody really likes this suggestion i know that because when i watch these other videos of people talking about it they're like eh, there's not much there but i'm sticking to my guns i think ash's dad is bruno we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. Why don't we talk about Bruno? Bruno of the Elite Four. I know you might be thinking, hey, hang on, Toby, this is a weird pick, and I've heard this before. There is not the evidence there, but I just want to recap to just a little bit. Breaking this down with Loxton, we were coming up with a number of characteristics that suit these characters very, very well. When it came to Ash Ketchum, there were all sorts of characteristics that his mum doesn't have, that he does have, that would suggest a direction to look for for his parents. And one of the ones, and this is the big one that everyone uses to completely debunk this theory is that I mentioned black spiky hair. And people were like, dude, black spiky hair is not a genetic trait, except in cartoons it kinda is. Like, I'm pretty sure having the same hairstyle and even dressing the same way, I know it's not like genetic, but it is something that anime and cartoons and TV shows and games use as shorthands for children who should be watching the show to help these connections out. I mean, just look at the ancestor characters from Pokemon Legends Arceus. None of them should look that identical or have the exact same hair. Like, why would Arezu have the same hair shape and hairstyle as Mars? But they do, because that's the point. It's like in Pokemon canon that this is the case. So I want to go back and visit Bruno. Not only does he share a lot of physical similar traits and fill in the gaps that Delia Ketchum is missing in a way that the other dad candidates, Giovanni or even Silver, don't seem to really quite match. At least in my opinion, when they actually meet Bruno the one time they do in the animated series, Bruno is like has the exact same personality as Ash, being both a goofball, but also like wholly determined to help Pokemon. He's got the exact same vibe going on. On top of that, he is a Pokemon master and the very first person that Ash Ketchum ever sees in the show. In fact, the very first image of the show involves a battle with Bruno on TV. Ash is watching his father and wants to be like him.
game. But the definitive bit of evidence for me is that episode where they introduced Bruno. No one knows where the mysterious Bruno, Elite Four member, is off training, apart from Ash's mum. Ash's mum knows where Bruno is because this is someone she knows about and is involved with and explains why he's not at home so much because he is off being a world-class Pokemon trainer. It's in the same way that she looks at Ash and goes, ah, oh, you're the apple of his eye is because they are like really similar. I think the combination of genetics, cartoon logic, and personality traits, as well as symbolism for the fact that Bruno is the first person that Ash is on TV, is enough to convince me. However, I'm filming this right before the final episode comes out, and something tells me at least one of these three theories is about to get slapped in the face. But who knows? The one that can't be, and in my opinion is the best one that I've put the most research into, is the level of Ash's Pikachu. So, let's talk about Pokemon levels. Do they exist in the animated series? Short answer, yes. There's a quiz show where James from Team Rocket gets asked what move Slowbro learns at a particular level, and he says he can't remember, which is a joke because the move is Amnesia, which means that levels exist and moves are learned at the same time as levels in the animated series. Wonderful. So Pikachu probably has a level, and I think levels are, are referenced elsewhere, like Paul releases a Starly because it's not a high enough level. I think in the School of Hard Knocks, uh, they talk about Pokemon being a particular strong level. So Pikachu has a level. And if Pikachu has a level, so too do other Pokemon. So now we've got to work out how experience works in the animated series. And sure enough, if we look to Ash's Krabby, it is a Pokemon that he caught outside Bill's lighthouse, meaning it's probably around level 15 to 20 at the time that Ash catches it. It is a small Krabby compared to Gary's after all. But hold on a minute, his Krabby only ever takes part in one battle in the Kanto League against an executor and evolves from the experience from that one battle. This it would be executor would probably be somewhere around the early level 40s, given that Will of the Elite Four uses an executor, and this is the point in the, the show that matches up with where that would be in the games. And a Krabby battling at that level does not gain enough experience to hit level 28 to evolve into a Kingler, meaning the experience gained by Pokemon in the animated series must be multiplied somewhat. In fact, the exact calculation is by 15.34 times the amount of experience. For every battle his Pikachu has in the animated series, the experience gained is 15.34 times. I used this back when I did the video originally talking about Ash's Pikachu level to assign a level to all of the Pokemon that Ash's Pikachu battles in the Indigo League starting at level 5 to see if I could work out how much experience that he would gain and then apply that multiplier. And sure enough, Ash's Pikachu at the end of it all came out at level 68, which lines up so nicely with Pokemon Yellow, the game inspired by the animated series because sure enough, your rival, who starts out with a level 5 Eevee at the same time that you start out with a level 5 Pikachu, ends the game at level 65, meaning this could be about right. It's a fun idea, it's a real stretch of logic, but then hang on, what does that mean for future generations? And what does that mean for Ash's Pikachu beating Leon's Charizard and then becoming the world champions? Well, you've probably heard this bit of the theory too, but I want to reiterate exactly how solid this is. Within the first two episodes of every single new generation of Pokemon for the longest time, Ash and Pikachu end up in some electrical shenanigans, we're gonna call them. In Hoenn, Pikachu is strapped to a giant electromagnet and depowered in some way. In Generation 4, there's a big Team Rocket explosion. In Generation 5, he's zapped by Zekrom. In Generation 6, it's the Lumios Gym. And in Generation 7, it's something to do with Tapu Koko. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit of a moment. But first of all, we do know this. Pikachu's electrical power level and its level seem to be like tied together somehow and it is something that we see affected regularly in the show. For example, I mentioned the electromagnet causing Pikachu to generate a fever and become unwell, but also in the Hoenn arc when battling Watson's gym, Pikachu is able to sweep against all of Watson's Pokemon, Magnemite, Voltorb and Magneton because it had become overcharged by battling a mechanical Raikou. So this is like a common thing where Pikachu's level can just fluctuate. This can explain why Pikachu in particular could lose to a level 5 Snivy if it's not the Ash is a new Ash theory. And the last time that I could find that this seemed to have occurred was when battling Tapu Koko at the very beginning of the Alola saga. There, Ash has a Z Crystal that disintegrates for some reason. The reason given by Kiawe is that because Ash isn't ready for it yet because he hasn't completed an island trial. But why would that mean that his Z Crystal would disintegrate? On top of that, Pikachu's moves are doing like nothing against Tapu Koko after it hits uh, it with electric terrain, which is literally described as sort of fluctuating Pikachu's power levels, maybe as a result of 
of this being Pikachu's first exposure to it, or the physical contact that Tapu Koko made with it in the battle, or maybe something to do with the Z move, the electric type Z move for the first time. This was the last time that Ash experienced some kind of electrical shenanigans with Pikachu. Again, within episode, the first two episodes of the new series, and it's happened every single generation since generation three onwards. Suggesting that at those points, Pikachu's level is resetting to level one, level five, maybe at highest like level 20 we've seen some pikachu events that show pikachu with his various caps at these different levels and at level 20. so what i want to do is then go through all of the battles in alola from there on out and all of the battles in pokemon journey from there on out and determine the kind of like what would the level of the opponents be and what would the experience game be and apply that exact same multiplier that's what i'm gonna do that's what i thought i was gonna do i asked my discord community for help and the incredible fruit was like Oh, I've already done this. I've been doing this for years. Thank you so much, Fruit, who came up with a spreadsheet of every single battle where Ash's Pikachu KO'd an enemy or blasted off Team Rocket, and even some level suggestions in there. I went through and assigned some levels myself. And what I found really, really interesting is the opponents that Ash faces in the early Alolan arc, like um, Hariyama, for example, are kind of a struggle for Pikachu. P Pikachu is only able to take out Hariyama with the use of its Z-move, and after Hariyama has already dealt half damage to itself, you using Belly Drum in this big Kahuna battle, Pikachu is really struggling at the beginning of Alola, not landing, again, any damage against Tapu Koko in that fight. However, skip forward a generation, go to Pokemon Journeys, Ash's Pikachu's first battle is against Team Rocket, where they use a Tyranitar and a Gyarados sent to them by Giovanni. These are probably around Giovanni gym levels, but specifically, Pupitar doesn't really evolve until level 55, which means that these Pokemon are probably all around level 55. Team Rocket Pokemon that are just being distributed for Team Rocket, and Ash's Pikachu is dealing with them by, like, quick attacking them and then just, like, one-shotting them or, or two-shotting them, which is is wild. Pikachu of the Journey Saga is so competent, it must be a high level. He uses Pikachu against B's Hitmontop, and Pikachu just like dances around Hitmontop and has basically no issues. Hitmontop gets in one hit. That is the best it can manage. And sure enough, we know that Pikachu is a very high level at the end of Journeys because... In all of his league battles, the win statistics for Pikachu are so much higher than any of his other Pokemon. His Pikachu is absolutely goated at this point. So, going through Alola, assigning levels to all of the enemies, the Team Skull Grunts, the, the Island Kahunas, uh, the Trial Captains, the legendary Pokemon they battle, the League. I got an amount of experience for an experience calculator, multiplied that by 15.34 times, and then gave Pikachu that much XL candy, which by the way, thank goodness so much for the experience candy that give a set amount of experience because previously like i had to hack all of this in pokemon yellow years ago and like this was so much more straightforward and sure enough at the end of the alola saga just one generation in pikachu is around level 80. Definitely strong enough to be taking out some high level, fully evolved level 55 or 45 Team Rocket Pokemon. Now, obviously, all of this is super approximate, but now battling these higher level opponents, that means that Ash's Pikachu is ending the Galar League um, at around level 100. Entering the battle with Leon at gone level 100. It passes level 100 somewhere within the Galar journeys. And I was sort of hoping that level 80 would be around that point because of the recent event that happened where you could get all of Ash Ketchum's championship team and they're all level 80. But then I realized level 80 must be an average for this team because there's no way all of these Pokemon are the same level. They're all used different amounts. So 80 is the average with some of those Pokemon being a little bit lower. Perhaps the Pokemon that are having lower win statistics in the final uh, the Champions 8 tournament and his Pikachu being the higher level pulling that level average up based on the fact that it won so many many of its matches. So where we are now at the end of Ash's journey, I believe that Ash's Pikachu is level 100. It got there somewhere in Master Journeys um, and uh, it was level 80 at the beginning. Explaining why Ash's Pikachu is such a go. So there we have it. Ash's age, Ash's dad, and Ash's Pikachu's level. Now, these are just my take, and obviously the logic for these are absolutely ridiculous and don't really make a lot of sense, but I enjoy the stories. I enjoy thinking about this kind of thing, even if you disagree, or maybe you like some of these takes. These are just part of my head canon. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed Ash Ketchum's adventure. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, by the way, to head on over to the merch store where we've got our new tree of evolution poster. It's still up there, and it's still going, and it's available for you. Links at the top of the description. Thank Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you've subscribed, and of course, saw hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. 
You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. Thank you to my Patreons who allow me to do channel relaunches like this, and a special shout out to the big patrons of this month, Jet Dive, Jed Rubin, Michael Hornchu, and Pokey Bliss. Thank you.